There are a couple of things that you can do for your travel photography and videography. Basically, you can make them more dynamic and more fun using different focal lengths, actually. Today we're going to be doing some tourist photography, well okay, not really, it's like a mix of street photography, travel photography, nature, well, more like landscape I guess, like the, the, this kind of photography, so yeah, right there, you see it, big waterfall. Alright. I love my Rico, but sometimes when you see this kind of views, like Rico 28, it's just not gonna cut it. And I also wanna like use full frame for these kind of shots. The view here is just incredible. Like just wow. All right, I'm gonna shoot a real quick long exposure before all the tourists comes in. Using an MD filter here. It's actually from free will. I'm gonna use a 10 stop and see how it goes. Probably like three to five seconds. Look at these insane amount of people. Sometimes the best way to get clean, good photo is just to wake up early and to avoid the crowd. I'm running into a little problem here. I'm trying to get all the way top to, well, the top of Europe, supposedly, but weather doesn't look that promising. Like, it's showing like fog and, yeah, I'm just not sure it's gonna be good and clear sky, so I'm gonna have to gamble a little bit. It's like a five minute stop in between, so I'm gonna head out and check out the view. Seriously, props to all the people who built this place. It's insane up here. See, imagine I got up here like 100 years ago. I feel like a tourist right now, like all these people behind me. Can't stress hard enough to have MD filter in these kind of places. It is extremely cold up here. Well, or should I say down here? Oh my god. I want to kill myself here. It's actually quite slippery. So it's 15 to 35, just like when I'm running. Going. Shooting lens because it's just so versatile. Whatever, I'm not sure which lens to use. I just grab this one. It's the easiest one to go to. I 
like seriously, with the crowd back up there, I didn't even have a place to change my lens. Well, I kinda have to. Alright, so word of advice, bring your sunglasses here. I have one for my camera, but not one for myself. So that's a, yeah, actually not that cold out here too. The coldest part I would say is inside the, the ice sculpture place. Anything indoors colder compared to like the outdoor. Because if you have the sun, then it's actually quite hot. You can probably get by with just a t-shirt too. Meanwhile, I'm gonna try not to fall and break my camera. Okay. These are heated and definitely way too hot in here. The one biggest benefit whenever you bring a camera that you can interchange your lens with is that you can have multiple focal lengths and that's probably like a con too because this way it's really hard to choose which focal lengths to bring and I have narrowed down to like just three lenses that I need the most that covers pretty much all I need to do either for photos or for videos. It's like a sauna in here. I'm sweating like a pig. Today, for example, I've used the 15 to 35, which I'm using right now for the video part and well, mostly photos too, because it's so versatile. And I also use the 70 to 200. That can really punch in, like compress your image, make everything like close together. Now last but not least, I have the 50 millimeter, which is just a well, rounded focal length that you can do pretty much anything with it. It's good for travel photos, it's good for portrait. It's also very good for street. Obviously, it depends on what kind of street photography you're into. So I would say that the 50 is probably not my favorite favorite, but it just does everything. So whenever I need something done, I just grab the 50. And specifically, whenever I travel, I use the 1550, the f1.8, because it's just so tiny and small, lightweight. This way I can just carry it around with me all the time. And plus, if I break it, if I drop it, it's not gonna hurt my feelings because it's only like, what, 100 something bucks? It's usually like the cheapest lens of the, I mean, well, of the lineup, most likely. Every brand has like a nifty 50. So I have the 15 to 35 it's recording right now, the 7200, got some filters, comes in handy all the time. And here's the nifty 50. If I really want to fit, I can get the, you know, 51.2 in here. But it's just gonna add more weight. It's really heavy, so spare batteries. So these are these two are dead actually, so we need to get them charged. But yeah. I would say that's like the Trinity for travel photography because this way you can get white shot, establishment shot, or environment shot, however you want to call it, and you have like a medium point which is the 50 or even 35 to 50. And then now you have the punching shot where I can really zoom into 7200. Maybe not the 200, depends on what you're shooting. But yeah, generally speaking, this will work perfectly fine and very well for your video, any type of video really. Now, if you have a three lens in your bag, it's gonna be heavy. It's gonna be, it's not gonna be light. But another way to do it is to have your phone. Your phone is super convenient nowadays. There are so many focal lengths in there. You can shoot raw, you can shoot like log footage. You just need to have enough like memories in your phone. That's all you need pretty much. Another lens that's really good for traveling is the 24 to 70. And that's also very popular. I actually have that, it's my work covers. But I've been using it like every day for work, so it's really boring. That's why I opt for the 1535 and the 50 and the 70 to 200. The other V1, you can do the 24 to 70 to 70 to 200. Two lens and it covers everything. Still gonna be big though, but it's an option. This ice cream is so freaking good, oh my god. 
Should I get another one?